Hey, we're back on Beach Channel Live. I'm Jason Kessler. I'm hosting another discussion about arts and culture in Miami, and I have the privilege of being with an amazing musician who I'm a brand new fan of. His name is Matt Brown. He is, uh, I, I would say, musically very capable jack of all trades. Usually you'll see him standing over a Nord piano with a six string bass. We got to dig into that and talk <laughs> about that. Matt, thank you for being here, bro. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me be a, yet another fan, dude. I'm sure <laughs> in a cavalcade of fans. Dude, if I was to give it a shot at describing your music, I, it would be difficult for me. Um, I already tried twice since I've been talking to you and I failed both <laughs> times. I would say that it's a fusion of so many different types of music. Um, it, it's, it's, it's intelligent with jazz. Like there's a jazz understanding for sure, but it is R R and B. It is soul. Um, can you describe it? Can you? And, and it's got some reggae vibes too. Can you? Yeah. Could you describe it? I would definitely say it starts with soul, and then it branches out into other genres. Um, jazz being one for sure. My dad was a jazz pianist and grew up listening to him. I'm Jamaican, so reggae is clearly one of them. And is grew up listening to a lot of reggae from yeah, a bunch of artists. All the notable ones that I'm sure you know, but um, probably some I don't. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, the Studio One catalog. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> also, a lot of a lot of R&B, a lot of all of that. And I grew up in the church, so that the gospel chops, like the chords and the melodies, the harmonies, all of that, all the color that comes with that, I love it. Like that's yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's just not fair, man. <laughs> To grow up in Jamaica, have a dad for a jazz pianist, and then you get gospel chops? Like, that's not even cool. Would you say that, um, how about when you're creating music, uh, do you dip into that stuff for your actual, like, chord progressions? Like, gospel's got its own chord progressions, I would say. Mm -hmm. I, there's not really any rules, necessarily. Um, and you can you also learned a lot about harmony there, but do you kind of borrow chord progressions from all those different types of music? Definitely, and... I would say I love using like the different substitutions that come with gospel chords and just like a lot of the songs, pop songs that are out use gospel chord progressions all the time. Not just enough. Those nice, uh, <laughs> they just settle well. They move and they settle and they, yeah. The they last keep... three years of top tens have had like diatonic chord progressions with no changes, dude. <laughs> you need to talk to them. <laughs> actually speaking of that man um what do you think about like you you just released your first album yes and i i would say as far as the uh trailer breadcrumbs left on spotify um you've got probably five or six years of of just dropping singles speaking of like top tens how would you compare releasing music now your style of music your generation through Spotify, what's that like now compared to like the top 10 stuff, which doesn't even make sense to me anymore? It's, I mean, for independent artists, dropping your own, you're on your own timeline. Like you could drop whenever you want to and whatever day you want to. Like it doesn't have to be Friday. People like to make you think that it has to be Friday. And that's because of playlisting and stuff it has like to be that. Friday, man. Like, <laughs> where, where were you Friday? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Like sometimes they, uh, like I know with like the top 10, it's very, uh, it's programmed, I want to say, like for like a better word. But um, when you're doing it yourself independently, you could drop it whenever. Like the ones that I've dropped in the past have usually been on Fridays, but my album, I dropped it on a Tuesday and because the date meant something to me. And it just... I don't know. I like the independence of being able to release things when I feel like it's ready to be released or needs to be released. Sure, man. And um, that date that you released your first album was was important. Do you want to tell me why? Yeah. Three years ago, my father passed from prostate cancer, and he's the reason why I play music. He took me to record my first single that dropped on a Friday. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's literally the reason why I play. And yeah. He's Very cool, Rudy Brown Jr. Um, did you uh, did you start writing music when you were real young, and and did he have an influence on that uh, feedback for you? Like uh, you're developing music in a musical yeah. household, right? Yeah, I wouldn't call it writing music when I was young, but I would hear him play something on the piano, then I'd go up to him and 
you know, just mash on it and <laughs> try, try to make some sounds that sounded similar. And yeah, yeah. I would say that's where it started. Like, that's where my first musical memory probably is, like, somewhere in that realm. But um, I didn't start writing, like, lyrics until after high school. And a friend of mine taught me how to produce and using FL Studio and just, like, you know, just simple little beats. Just add the 808. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, when you say eight oh eight, uh, is that like a boss, like a five hundred five or something like that, or is that is that no, looping? Okay, I mean like talking about like plugins and stuff like oh, that. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah but, you got to help a guitarist uh, <laughs> with it. Yeah, all I know is uh, like you know three reverb pedals and that's it, and then I'm done. Yeah, man. <laughs> Speaking of looping, um, a lot of times you perform by yourself, and then sometimes mm-hmm. you perform with these big on uh, like ensembles, mm-hmm. which I'm sure just like gravitate around you man i'm sorry i'm sure there's a bunch of people trying to play with you correct me if i'm wrong but i imagine from your sound that that's happening but you can handle uh a lot of instruments at the same time Mm -hmm. uh how are you looping and stuff like that and if people come see you like what what could they expect when they're when you're looping yeah well the looper i use is a nice little uh boss rc30 but it's i love it it has the dual channel and I just usually start with whatever I feel called to first, whether it be the beat of the song or the bass line or the piano riff. But it's usually something with rhythm so that I can <laughs> lock yeah. in. But um, yeah, I love, I love my looper. And I love playing with people that can play with me while I'm playing with the looper also. And that can be... That can be an adventure at times. Yeah, man. I, I'm sure... <laughs> uh, if. For, for you got to get the best of the bunch to, to yeah. jump in with you. W- um, are you basically creating music live? Yeah. Yes. How Everything often do you do that, man? Analog. Um, all my gigs. I Like all my gigs, I play right on the spot. Everything is from thin air and nothing is ever going to be the same twice like when I play, which is I find a lot of joy in that and being able to change things like this time I might play this song with the reggae feel. The next time I might throw a little Afrobeat type vibe to it or just make it like a classic soul four on the floor. Like just, yeah. That's amazing, dude. Um, I, I mean, no one's going to hear the same show twice, like you said, dude. Exactly. That You know, that's like, uh, I don't know, Dali like sketching in the back of a cab to pay for cab fare, dude. <laughs> like that guy has a one of one. Yep. You know what I mean? Any yep. of your shows is going to be a one of one. Um, I, I would say people that, uh, are really good instrumentalists on, on several different instruments are really the ones that can, that can handle something like that. Uh, so like you said, you could be starting with the bass, you could be starting with the keys, you could be starting yeah. with the beat and you just develop it. Like I, I even saw on your Instagram, um, like one of the videos said like kind of dug this vibe might delete later (laughs) (laughs) should that be like the name of your next album i don't know (laughs) might delete later (laughs) but um yeah coming up with the songs like it could be Mm -hmm. starting from any instrument yeah any instrument whatever is uh usually i try to segue from the last song so if i end on piano i try to start the next one on piano just to make it a smooth transition but um it changes it always changes, and I beatbox as well. So like sometimes they'll start with the beatbox beat, and then go from there. And yeah. So you're hanging out with other people like out of love for people and charity because you don't actually need to spend <laughs> any time with anyone, dude. <laughs> um, what? So as a like a live looper and a person who's creating music on the fly, um, you got to have like. It was there like a stage show that really surprised you and was really good? And was there any show that was like memorably bad, dude, where that didn't work? That's yes, that's happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like Give me the, one of both. Usually the bad ones. I won't say when and where, but if it's a bad one, it's because either I can't hear myself, like the monitor system isn't working out too well, and I'm losing time of the loop or yeah yeah <laughs> or the it's like, like hearing yourself through a phone yeah it's got a bad connection or like what's also happened before is i go to loop like the beatbox and then that mic feeds back and then that that <laughs> feedback is stuck in the loop but you got to make it work like it once and it's in do. the loop then it's, it's in the loop yeah for sure but um 
yeah, amazing, man. It. Can I, can I ask you, Matt, where, mm-hmm. where did you, uh, so just to give people an example, like, uh, the, the, the album is called self, right? Yes. And the first track on it is after the intro love. Yeah. I was jamming that track and, uh, it had the most beautiful quote. Uh, I think it opens up, it says, um, oh, it's, it's self love, like repeated. Yeah. And then it says, uh, like one of the lines was no one can give that energy, but yourself. Like yeah. that's the whole theme of that song. Does that kind yeah. of theme, uh, is it pervasive throughout the whole album it is and it's like always evolving because that's something that we're dealing with on the daily like on a daily basis and something might happen you even something as simple as like spilling your coffee first instinct might be to get upset like mad but it's like even in that having grace with yourself like that was an accident chill it's okay (laughs) <laughs> that's a form of self-love like you got to be aware of that and in tune with that that's a constant daily thing i so. i can't imagine that coming from someone better than you know a person who's who's basically recreating their music every time they get up on stage you know what i mean yeah. and you're making yourself like vulnerable to accidents and like really happy accidents yeah. um I, I i'm gonna throw up on this screen here the cover of your album which is which is really amazing along with that uh dude i gotta mention i saw a a video that i think you dropped also recently called pacino yes all right was that your Uh, first like full production video was well in a studio yes so like shooting the video in the actual studio designed for music videos yes yeah and that was that was a lot of fun that was over at uh chaos made studios out in Doral. And awesome people over there. Shout out to Andres. Dude, it, it looks amazing. And um, and it really sounds amazing, dude. I, I feel like it's a vibe that I, I encourage everybody to listen to it. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a vibe that Miami should sound like right now. Yes, thank you. I guess you feel the same way. Yeah, me and Von <laughs> Archer, he's the other artist in it. Uh, we have a project coming soon as well. So there's going to be more of that vibe coming. Yeah. And... Um, is he an MC, and do you try to include like at least a uh, like a verse or two with an MC when you're collaborating? For sure, he's an MC. He's actually the one that brought the song to me. He was like, "Hey, can you produce something that has this type of vibe?" And like, then we started on that, and then next thing you know, it's like, "Okay, we have the whole project coming." So it's, For sure, dude. Yeah. And uh, uh, how many pictures we got of you? Let's see. Do we have any of you? I think that's you in studio. Yeah, that's. Um, Tell me about that, man. We released an EP called Somewhere Up There, and it was just a fun EP about just having a good time. And Somewhere Up with There with like 12 R's. Yeah, exactly. A couple W's. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, a fun, it was a fun project. We have uh, three skits in between where like the door just kept opening by itself, so just... <laughs> it was just getting eerie at, after a certain point. Did that point. actually happen? <laughs> it did. We got it on camera, and it's going to get released on the videos. <laughs> Dude, is Doral haunted? Like, was that Doral? Where is that? That was at my place. Okay. So I don't know where they built, if they built the building on top of something, but <laughs> yeah, we gotta find I, don't, out, bro. I don't know. What should a person's impression be when they see a six string bass? Because I think it's either like some kind of music wizard or <laughs> some someone that's super pretentious, dude. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say, as soon as you start playing it, like the idea of pretension goes out the door. <laughs> I appreciate it's that, that funky. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, it's just uh, the way I look at it is all the pattern. Like, it's four is going down. So you have your low B, E, A, D, G, C. Those are the string names. So this, but, the the first string becomes a C, and that, that B is the low string. Yeah. That's how yeah. you can, like, like shake the foundation of a place. Exactly. Yeah. Hit that rattles the wall, rattles the walls. Right. Yeah. Like if we Love have it. more like compromised condominiums, <laughs> like, you might just go take test it. And make, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I gotta say, I don't know if we can throw a picture up, but your bass in particular, mm-hmm. um, I, like, is almost a character of its own. Uh, yeah. What's the story of that bass, real quick? Because it, so, it's got a vibe from. Yeah. Thank you. Back in uh, 2021, my girlfriend at the time surprised me with this for my birthday and a week later I proposed but 
<laughs> That's what a bass like that can make you do. You see that? <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> but no, she, she got it custom painted by Lola Blue. She's a local Miami artist, and she actually has a studio in Wynwood. And she's done, that was the first guitar that she did. She's done uh, Quest Loves drums, Anderson Pax drums, like all these things. So my wife handed this to me. I was like, okay, this is loud. I love it. Can't mess up. <laughs> it's cool. It's loud. But yeah, I love it. It glows in the dark. And it glows in the dark. Yeah. Can't beat that. Oh, man. <laughs> I got I, I to gotta come see a show that just has black lights. Got to like, make that Not happen. everyone does, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If they're like outdoors serving margaritas, you're never going to know that that thing glows <laughs> in the dark. Yeah. That's incredible, man. Are, are there some... Can you tell me like some of your favorite venues, dude? And and I know that you have a residency coming up, mm -hmm. um, which I really want to be a part of. So so go ahead and let me know what that is. But also tell me like some of the venues you really dig playing in Miami that's good yeah. for your sound. There's a bunch of awesome venues around here. Um, as far as sound, I got to shout out Bar Nancy. They have great sound over there. Every time I play there, it sounds amazing. Um also, Savage Labs always has cool shows there. I love playing there. Like, it's always a good vibe. Uh, so I'm a regular at Bar Nancy, which uh -huh. is, uh, like, just a great place for local musicians to yeah. develop their sound on, and a great reason to go to Calle Ocho. Yeah. But um, help me with my ignorance about Savage Labs because I've heard it dropped with so many musicians that I respect, and I haven't, I haven't checked oh, yeah. it out. Yeah. Uh, Savage Labs is over in Wynwood, and I've been able to play a few shows there based on other people booking themselves there and be like, hey, you want to be a part of our lineup? I'm like, sure. And then end up at Savage Labs playing the set behind them. And it's been it's been cool the times I've been there. And it's been nice, like, good turnouts for everybody, like people coming out to show support and love. And I'm sorry to hear about them dropping musicians. So Yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, is it uh, the type of place that's are, – are there some places more than others – where you feel comfortable just totally totally creating like songs on the fly cuz i got to i got to say from from your songs and the albums mm -hmm. i the album that i've i've gotten like halfway through like i'd want to hear those songs yeah so yeah how do you how, how do you split the difference between songs that are already written with like written harmonies man uh -huh. like the, you know yeah. to to just playing around and and like letting something new be created on stage I mean, a lot of times when I play my songs on stage, I make sure that I play them for that moment rather than trying to recreate something that I made back in the studio, you know, because when you're chasing that, then you're just setting yourself up to be like, ah, it didn't sound exactly like it. So I go in with the intention of this is going to be a special version of the song, and I hope you accept it. If, yeah. If you do, great. If you don't, <laughs> It wasn't for you. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's, have you ever written a song on stage live that you ended up keeping later? I Yes, I have. Um, one, I actually released it. It was called I've Been. And it just started as a jam. And I was just jamming it at an open mic. And then I actually recorded the loop. So I was able to save the loop. I was like, I like this. I'm going to revisit it later. And I recorded the actual audio from the open mic as well. So I was able to keep the words and yeah yeah you i turned that, that one into a into a single you need but, like <laughs> boss needs to have your back man and like <laughs> just give you like banks um, yeah that, yes as um, goals do you ever have to like go back and like erase your banks too because you do a lot of live looping man and there's you you unless you're good at throwing stuff away <laughs> i've actually i had to break out of that because i got up to on my looper still for the past like three years, I've had 70 loops saved and it just stays there at 70. I do a good job at erasing loops after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing past 70. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Um, there's also a, another collaboration. I don't know if you want to talk about, but it's you and two other guys that has the best name. Um, what was it called? Uh, I got it right here. It's a regular collab of yours. Um, man, I had it. I think it's like it's like black soup something, black stew. Oh, uh, dark brown stew. Dark brown yeah, stew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that a side project? Those are my so it's uh, Trey Dark on drums, 
uh, myself. Don't and, tell anyone I said I said it was called Black Soup. <laughs> hey. That's, it's Dark Brown Stew. That's the album name, and Dark Brown Stew is the... <laughs> one sounds delicious, though, and the other one... One sounds like sustenance. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> um, and then Stew, the original Stew was for our homie Basham Stewart, who lives up in... way up there, in like Fort Pierce area. But it was the three of us gigging together, and then... Also, Matthew Stewart, another Stewart, no relation, but also amazing musician. So that's another reiteration of the group Dark Brown Stew. Is there anything you'd say to musicians coming up or people who are trying to write live and are loose like that, just about like encouraging them to play with other musicians? Just go in with the open mind. Like your idea might blossom into something else. Their idea might blossom into something else. It's just a matter of, like, just bringing it all together and just jamming. Yeah, yeah. man. Uh, I encourage everybody to, uh, like, go see whatever collab you might have. But seeing you solo uh, is something I'm really excited about. You got any shows, uh, like, any places upcoming? Yeah, I'll actually start a residency pretty soon at Kill Your Idol. And that's going to be solo for three of the four weeks of the month. And then third Sundays will be a jam session. And it's going to be a live loop jam session. So me with the drummer. And then if you're a loop artist, bring your 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 stuff out and set it up. Let's loop together. Is it, are, you, are these sets going to be like a little bit peppered with a couple of, of, uh, of covers? Because I've heard you do a cover of Everybody Wants to Rule the World, and it was completely different than anything I'd ever heard. It <laughs> was just like a, it was like a bass jazz education Word. on a song I, I didn't think could be better, and you ripped it up. It was Thank something you. brand it. new. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so like the solo ones, I'm going to do a lot of covers and mixing and originals and the way that I do it, you know, like just on the spot and just go for it. But the well, jam covers, is going to be... Bro. No, not at all. Because your, your original music's amazing. Man. I appreciate it. And Thank I hope you. everybody gets out to Kill Your Idol while you're there, yes. which is a great, like, kind of old-school venue yeah. on in the heart of South Beach. Um, get out and see Matt Brown anywhere you can. Thanks so much for for hanging out with me, man. And I, Thank you. I can't wait to see you live and get a jazz bass education. All right. How about Thank bass you, education with some jazz? Hey. Yeah, man. Let's That's do it. <laughs> order of importance. All right, guys. This has been Beach Channel Live. Had a great time with Matt Brown. We'll see you soon. I've been Jason Kesser. Thanks so much.